do you really want closure? Or do you want control? Hmm? And I feel like this particular episode might not be an easy one to listen to because if you've ever dated a man in your life before and your dating history has been men, then at some point you've probably had the closure conversation. For those who don't know, closure or the seeking of closure is when after you've had maybe like a mini breakup with someone or even an actual breakup. So the mini breakup is like, we're going on a break. But the actual breakup being that you've actually split up and the purpose of the closure is to have a conversation to find out what really went wrong and trying to get some answers and really trying to confirm. So is it true? Well, I just kind of feel like sometimes... We tell ourselves we want closure, but really what we want is control. And that control isn't the kind of control you might be thinking of where it's like, oh, you want to control that other person and force them to get back with you maybe. But actually, I feel like the control goes deeper. How I see it is that sometimes when you're seeking closure from that other person, even though the situation is very much closed The case is closed now and we can leave it there. Where you're looking for control is in that place in your mind where you now have to wean yourself off this person. So you have to not just detach from them, but you now have to create a new set of patterns that don't involve that person being in your life. It could have been that when that person was in your life... (laughs) part of your daily routine involved them many patterns of behavior were about them it could have been that you know a huge chunk of your day was spent talking to them and they played a massive role in helping you maybe it was that they were reassuring you or that they managed to take up such a space in your life that you now just find them irreplaceable and where you're seeking that control is that you don't want to deal with those feelings you don't want to deal with that idleness That idleness being not knowing what to do with yourself now that the relationship is over. Because a part of you feels like accepting that it's done. It's One, it's kind of (laughs) boring. And two, you feel like, yeah, there's somewhere you can still find a way to just like get your way in this situation. And... With the finding closure thing, yeah, where I worry about it is usually when the relationship ends on friendly slash open-ended terms. Now, I'm not saying that if a relationship ends amicably and you manage to be friends, that's a bad thing. Where I have a bit of worry is if the relationship ends on very sort of like mysteriously open-ended terms where (laughs) if you are not confident in walking away you might feel like a way to gain control is to tell yourself that because it ended in a kind of open-ended loose manner that maybe there's room to go back and experience the comfort and familiarity that you now miss that you once had in that relationship and To me, it's a really, really delicate relationship that you have with yourself when you've just come out of a breakup because you're fighting this impulse to reach out to them. Not only are you fighting that impulse, but you're also in a tussle with that sort of like Pavlovian response to seeing a text come up on your home screen on your phone and it's them. Like a part of you wants... Anytime you get a notification that maybe it's them reaching out, a part of you feels like maybe they're going to come to the realisation that they've missed out. And I feel like all of these thoughts, it still comes down to this place of like wanting to control what the ultimate narrative of this breakup means. And I think it also is from a place of not wanting to feel rejected, like not wanting to sit with the reality that this person ended the relationship, not you. 
So you feel this sense of like, I just need to, I just need to kind of get some sort of victory out of this. Do you know, there are some people, yeah, who are so, I really don't know how I feel about the word narcissist because it gets so overused, but there are people who really meet that definition and who really fit that character. Because it's like, there's introverts, there's extroverts, there's narcissists, like it's a personality type. I feel like there are some people who might be narcissists where like, let's say you break up with that person who's narcissistic. They will do everything. They might do everything in their power to win you back and grovel, beg, write all the letters, send all the texts, type all the emails to you. But ultimately, it's an effort on their part not to seek closure, but to seek control because what they want to do is once they've got you back after all those gestures, then they'll break up with you. So they can say they broke up with you. It's so fucked, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But people really be like that. There are a lot of people who really be like that. Like, I know it sounds ridiculous to put all this energy into possibly reconciling with someone, admitting that you went wrong, saying that you're sorry, buying gifts, sending long letters, whether it's email or by hand, and giving this person the impression that you are regretful of how you hurt them. But deep down actually their real intention is yeah they want to hurt you back and that's really scary and maybe it could be flipped the other way around where you might be that person that wants to hurt them back like maybe you're a woman who has been scorned by this man and yeah a part of you just wants like the closure in it like you want to you want to really deeply understand like was I really the problem um, are you sure this can't work? And then when you feel like you've gotten back together, then you do something that's like really horrible to hurt his feelings so that you can feel like you got your revenge because you were seeking control. <clears throat> it's a control thing. I've had to sometimes accept that, okay, I was in a situation with a guy and he's the one that ended things and I have to kind of like live with that bruised pride a bit of like I hate when a guy gets to just end things with me like no I'm the one that gets to end I'm the one that's meant to be ending it but there have been times when guys have ended stuff and you know I've had to spend months afterwards giving myself the closure that he was not going to give me because sometimes it could end in such a way where you did see it coming and you don't really need answers necessarily because when you look at the last few weeks or months of the relationship, yeah, it was give and break up. But for whatever reason, both of you stalled until it finally happened. And I remember being in a in a relationship with relationship. <laughs> Listen, honestly, when I say, when I describe my flings and time wastings with men, it feels laughable calling it a relationship. But anyway, for the sake of conversation, there was a relationship I was in with a guy where he's the one that ended it, even though he's the one that initiated us being together. And now I can look back at it in hindsight and be able to point at all the identifiers of why this would never have worked, no matter how fun at times it felt dating him. But I had to give myself the closure. I'm not going to lie. It was not easy because... <sighs> This guy really put a lot of effort into making it known to me that he liked me, even after we had a fight. And he was very, very, very um, committed to making it known to me that he was sorry. And he was, you know, when someone is, you know, there's the, there's the apology that you can get from someone where, yeah, they said they're sorry, but it's a very I'm sorry for everything ass apology, which I think is a bullshit apology. I think a correct apology is when someone is specific about what they're sorry for. And in this case, this guy was very specific about what he was sorry for. So, of course, I forgave him. And it almost felt like that particular... um hurdle that we overcame together in him profusely apologizing and me accepting it it felt like wow our relationship's going to be stronger now because 
I've accepted this apology and he's shown me that he's he's good at apologizing. Well, 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 no, because what happened was after that profuse apology happened, I want to say that relationship lasted two more weeks. Two more weeks. Yeah. So all that effort was for what? For what? <laughs> and it wasn't me that did anything wrong. It was him. He was like the textbook avoidant type. And you know what? I have... I've, 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 I, the majority of guys I've dated have been more on the avoidant side of things. I have dated a couple like anxious sort of clingy type guys. But majority has been avoidant. And it's interesting because avoidant people normally do that. I've noticed where once they feel like they're actually going to lose you, they will put in more effort to win you back than they've ever put into, like, any part of being with you, if that makes sense. It's like, you really, oh, wow, I didn't know you liked me like that, with the way you're really apologising and doing the rounds to try and get other people to help help you get your message across to me that you're sorry. Wow. Oh, wow. Imagine if you had this energy with getting other people to show me how much you love me. Maybe, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it feels quite interesting watching avoidant men do that thing where, like, they know that you're actually about to leave. So they will suddenly put on all this effort to just, like, get you back. But really, it's just to buy themselves time. Meanwhile, they have no intentions of taking you seriously. So when it ends for good, there's no reason to seek closure because you already know that like this wasn't meant to work anyway. There really isn't a compatibility. But I feel like sometimes like <laughs> another reason people tell themselves, women mainly, another reason why women tell ourselves that we're seeking closure is because sometimes you low-key want to see if like you're actually irresistible. Like, it's like an ego-based pursuit of closure. Again, it's a control thing. And it's not like you're trying to control him. It's just something to do with control, where you want to see if, now that he's moved on and he's got a new girlfriend or maybe even started a new family or now he's married, you want to see if you still have some sort of control over him in terms of, like, you want to see if you're still irresistible to him. <laughs> and like I, what does that satisfaction do for you because okay you've seen that you're still irresistible to him okay what's he gonna do about how irresistible you are is he gonna send you money because let me if you get caught if he's got a wife or he's in a relationship with someone else and you get caught like is it gonna be worth getting caught like is there some sort of like thing he's gonna do for you that's gonna make this all worth it because nine times out of ten it's not even worth it but again what's interesting about the seeking closure thing is like it's almost like it's you versus the narrative you've told yourself about the situation and what that means and reflects about you because for example let's say you're seeking closure because this guy who was love bombing the hell out of you and was giving you the impression that you're irreplaceable and that he really wants to pursue things with you and that he's never had this kind of bond with anyone before has suddenly disappeared off the face of the earth. You don't hear from him anymore. You feel so confused as to how someone who was so intertwined of your energy is now able to just like live a separate life without you and doesn't even care to reach out to you. Like you want to get to the bottom of that. Well, it's worth it's worth really asking yourself why have things changed on his part? Maybe he's gotten what he wanted. And sometimes guys don't have to get get sex from you or get access to your body for it to be that they've gotten what they wanted. It could be that he just wanted the supply of knowing that you are obsessed with him or he wanted that supply of knowing that he can get someone as hot as you like this could be his way of topping up his self-esteem by dating women like you multiple times multiple women like you at once like you don't know if you're on a carousel for this man you don't know if you're just on like a conveyor belt 
of women who look similar to you, dress similar to you, act similar to you, think similar to you, and he's got you lot all on rotation. And he occasionally tells you lot what you want to hear and then he disappears. And then you're in a place where you're now trying to seek closure. So you now come and text him out of nowhere to be like, hey, what happened? Did you forget about me? I don't understand how you're able to just move on after all of that we shared together. And yeah, that seeking of closure thing can be a huge ego boost for men. And that's why I'm really uncomfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with giving men free ego boosts that they haven't earned, especially when it comes from a situation that they're the ones who initiated it. Like, if as a guy you've broken up with me or you've decided that you don't want to continue pursuing things with me, no matter how fun it was, I'm not going to go and be seeking closure from you because I've already got confirmation that you're going to keep playing with me. So me seeking closure has now given you the go-ahead to know that I'm definitely somebody who doesn't really respect my time. I don't respect my own time because I'm ignoring all of the signs that show me clearly that you see me as a temporary pleasure fix and I'm still going out of my way to contact you to ask what happened. Like, it's very clear what happened. He wanted you for attention. He wanted you so that he could have somebody on his arm. And now you have fulfilled that need. He's not wanting that anymore. And look how easy it was for him to detach. And these are the people that I'm supposed to feel sorry for. I This is why I feel, I feel so funny about the idea of, like, feeling sorry for men to such an extent that I'm going to go out of my way to be making excuses for their behavior because another thing about seeking closure is that it still puts men in a position of power to hurt you again especially if the way that things ended involved him insulting you or him suddenly revoking all the love that he had for you maybe him taking back gifts from you (laughs) or him suddenly like disowning any association he has with you to an extent where it impacts people around you if you were that deeply involved in the relationship like that to me after that after such a turbulent and painful ending that this man has initiated why am I contacting you to seek closure what am I what what is the closure do you want him to insult you again do you need like extra quadruple confirmation that he sees you as a dickhead that's the bit that bothers me because when you're seeking closure, it's, yeah, are you, do you, do you really want closure or do you want control? Because it comes across as though what you want is for him to tell you what you want to hear, which is, oh my God, you're the one that got away. I regret it already. I can't believe that I was stupid enough to let you go. Yes, I have a wife and five kids now, but I still think about you every single night, every single night, every freaking day. (laughs) Like, that's not going to happen. And in the odd chance it happens, like, let's say, okay, let's entertain the possibility that, you know, a man that you've had strong dealings with has moved on and is now married to someone else and maybe has started a family with them where there's now children involved and you want to go and seek closure because it ended on very ambiguous terms and it turns out that he still thinks about you and he still wants to sneaky sneak with you. Do you want to be a sneaky link for a married man? Especially if that man ain't got money. Because look, if he's got bare money, yeah, and like he's investing in your career, I'm talking like he's giving you... <laughs> thousands of pounds to for you to invest in your in your startup or he's paying six months up front of rent for you in your apartment because he just wants to just be there as a support from far away or you know like he's just coming through for you unless that's happening it does not feel worth stepping into that territory oh my goodness like I know there's this ongoing debate of like to date married men or to not date married men. And I'm still figuring out where I sit on that because (laughs) um, I'm a Nigerian woman and I've lived in Nigeria for long enough to observe that it is unfortunate what I'm about to say. And I wish this wasn't the case. Okay. 
But it is unfortunate that if you want to get the best dating experience, especially out of African men, specifically Nigerian men, then it has been said severally by women who are involved in this particular lifestyle that it is better to date married men. (gasps) Who said that? But it's true, unfortunately. And I'm not someone that's going to necessarily advocate for dating married men. I just feel like no matter what kind of man you're dating, married, single, in a non-monogamous partnership, that man just better be showing up in your life, showing up and showing out. And if he's going to be married or if he's going to have someone else in his life, then he needs to be doing way more to make this worth your while. Because let someone come to me as a woman. Let's up, because this we're in the age of the internet. We've been in the age of the internet for a while now where the last thing you want is for some some married man's wife to now put you on blast on the internet because you went to go and do closure. You went to go and you went to go and seek closure with somebody who is now married. And what did the closure do for you? Because the closure has now led to exposure. You know, you have to now ask yourself, was it worth it? Would you do it again? (laughs) And these are questions that you can ask yourself before you even embark on that wild journey of seeking closure. You can really sit with yourself and ask yourself, is this man worth the potential insult I'm going to collect? Because whether this man is single or not, there is still a potential that I will collect insult by reaching out to this man to seek closure there is a chance he's gonna ignore me which might make me feel more upset there's a chance he might respond to me but within that chance of him responding to me there is a chance I might hear what I want to hear but there's also a chance that I will not hear what I want to hear and the chance of me hearing what I don't want to hear is much higher than the chance of me hearing what I actually want to hear so if we entertain the possibility of me hearing what I don't want to hear well, what are those things I might hear that I don't want to hear? It could be that he will just tell you that, well, you know, I'm still into my ex-girlfriend and yeah, sorry for wasting your time. Like, I'm just, mm -mm, I'm not hearing sorry for free anymore. (laughs) Like, it's different if you go out of your way to seek closure from a guy, because that's on you. Whatever you hear, whether you like what you hear, you don't like what you want to hear, you are, you are the one that went to go and contact him. But let's say he contacts you. The conversation of closure, especially if he comes out the blue to contact you, you still are in a position where you get to decide, do I reply to this guy or not? Should I block his number or not? Because I've had, I've had an experience. Oh my God, I had a recent experience. Oh my days, yeah. And I, <clears throat> I really hope that this man has blocked me. <clears throat> but... I've spoken about it briefly on this podcast and I suspect that this is probably what's happened here I'm about to explain. So what I spoke about briefly a few episodes ago was that there was this guy who unfortunately I was in my early 20s so my sense of judgment for situations that were reflective of what I was worth was very skewed and I chose to lay with a man who had little to nothing going for him um just really embarrassing and I can say it now and talk about it openly because I don't entertain that anymore and that is a version of my life that informed the choices that I now make so I continuously refer to that you know when I have to remind myself of how far I've come anyway this guy like I said at the time had nothing going for him and mm, When I was about 26, he reappeared and I was seeking closure by entertaining his pursuit of closure. Because it's like he he just came back because he, okay, he wanted closure, but he also wanted to see if I would just let him touch my breast again. Like, I feel that's what it was. Even though he never said that, that's just what that, like, come on whatever come on Mr man like yeah you've written me this whole ass email to tell me about how much you still think about me I know that it's just because you miss having sex with me and you miss that I was actually entertaining you when you were at your absolute just 
you know when someone has given up on their life I feel like I'm I was entertaining that person when they're in that portion of their life this is when they came back when I was 26 and yeah that when they came back and I allowed myself to be close to them again I quick I very quickly I want to say it was like a two-week window I very quickly realized this is a bad idea and I hate this so much and I'm not doing this again and then maybe like four months ago or five months ago this same guy came back via email fucking long ass email talking about how he still thinks of me and that he you know misses me and how he hopes he can still hopefully be in my life even if it's as a friend and I just know that yeah this is his attempt to try and like seek closure but really what he wants is just comfort and company and I don't want to give him that because he doesn't deserve that from me anyway and I ignored that email now I want to say it was like maybe two weeks ago or just over a week ago. That's all I thought this man, I thought I had him blocked on Instagram, but maybe he made another account with another phone or something. But he replied to a story of mine. And ironically, the story he was replying to was a snippet from my podcast where I was talking my shit as I usually do. And he sent me this story response that felt very like, not self-deprecating, but it just felt a bit like, his message implied that he has realised that he's not good enough for me. That was what his really short message read as to me. And I saw it and I ignored it. There's no indication on his end that I've seen the message because the message went to my requests. So I just saw it and I was like, oh, okay. Weird. Because this guy sent me an email five months ago that I didn't reply to. But I guess he just... He's probably just feeling horny and bored and that's why he decided to seek my attention that day and it didn't work because he didn't get a response from me from that story reply. But what I did notice was that same night, because I'd seen that story reply in the daytime, that same night, I actually looked for his account because I wanted to hide my story from him. From him. I didn't want to block him because blocking him would imply that I've seen his message and blocking him is still a form of it's not contact, but blocking him is a form of like, it's still a gesture of acknowledgement. And I don't necessarily want to block him on Instagram. Like we have nothing to talk about. He's blocked on the main places where he could contact me, which is which is like phone number. Like it's just like how you can't block someone from sending you emails, isn't it? The most you can do is like f set, set their email to forward automatically to junk if they send you anything, but it's still not blocking. Like they can still send you stuff. So that's how I see my Instagram. Similarly, people can always create a new account. Anyway, saw that message he sent me, ignored it. Then that same night, I looked for his account because I wanted to hide my story from him. And then I'm typing his account. For some reason, it's not coming up. And I'm like, did this man block me? It can't be because he literally just sent me a story reply like earlier in the day. So I logged into another account I have on Instagram and I searched his handle and it came up. So I was like, oh, okay, he did block me. Well, how weird is that then? So the same man that sent me an email five months ago telling me that he misses me and he still thinks about me, to which I didn't respond to. And then last week, he's now sent me a story reply to a podcast snippet where I'm talking about men not being good enough to date me. And then he's now blocked me in the same day. So I'm sus my suspicion is that he probably sent that message thinking that I would open it and respond to it and he can get some sort of closure fix that he wanted. But what might have happened was he probably curiously went to go and listen to some of my podcast episodes because I feel like what can happen with guys is that if they miss you, no matter what their reason is for missing you, even if it's like a deeply selfish sexual reason that they miss you, sometimes when guys miss you, they will like just binge consume anything they can get their hands on regarding you so it's basically stalking but it's not like stalking as in like no taking note of your whereabouts but rather they're just like if in my case if like similar to me you have a podcast maybe they'll go and just like listen to your podcast so they can just hear your voice and then maybe that's what happened he went to go listen to my podcast and then he heard he probably heard an episode where I was describing <laughs> where I was describing some stupid guy that I dated when I was in my early 20s and this guy sent me an email and he's like, wait, that's me. And he probably heard that and got really upset. And then that's probably why he blocked me. But it's like, well, thank goodness I never responded to that initial sort of like hoovering that he was doing when he sent me that email five, five four months ago to try and seek closure from me.
Because if I had decided that I'll be like, okay, you know what? He sent me this email. He said he still misses me. And yeah, this has been a back and forth since my early 20s. And he's still in a really, really shitty position from what it sounds like he's described. Let me just give him a chance because human beings can change. I wouldn't have known at that point that this is the kind of guy who's going to still go on to block me if he like see something that makes him feel sensitive that I've said like that just feels weird to me and I'm like now I'm now I'm thinking well thank god I didn't reply to your email because you've shown your ass like you could have just not even responded to my story you could have just silently been watching me but you couldn't control your impulse and now you've gone and blocked me and I'm not even I'm not even mad that I've been blocked by someone I don't want to hear from but it's more just the idea of the timeline of things and this is what I'm big on Sometimes sit on your hands, sit on your desire to seek control by wanting closure and rather let things play out. Even if a guy contacts you with a letter or an email or a long-winded WhatsApp text telling you that he's sorry, you don't have to respond to that. Sometimes let it play out. See how he handles your silence because that will tell you a lot. And that will tell you if he's someone that's changed Um, because... If, like in my case, a guy comes to you, closure baiting you, and you don't fall for the bait, and then he finds another way to try and get your attention, and then he something somewhere hurts his feelings and he ends up blocking you, well, that tells you that he hasn't changed, has he? And that tells you that you should be glad then that you didn't fall for his closure bait, because imagine what kind of back and forth draining situation you would have put yourself back in because you were curious and you wanted to seek closure and you wanted to see if maybe things have changed and then you end up realizing after you've gone and sought said closure that the closure ain't even there and rather you got confirmation you got confirmation that you was right to remove yourself from that situation so sometimes the closure you're looking for is confirmation but you can give yourself that confirmation without even indulging that person's attention this is the part that really gets people it's the self-control to actually sit on your own desire to seek control in external situations feeling strong and brave enough to accept that okay maybe I want a little bit of an ego boost here seeing this guy groveling but actually the person that's groveling can't do anything for me so there's no point in me entertaining this potential ego boost rather I can create my own confirmation that this was never going to work and that this is not good for me and no amount of closure from this guy is going to override the confirmation that I have because really and truly putting yourself in a position to seek closure from someone who never met your needs anyway puts you in a position where you're more likely to just hear what they want you to hear but are they going to show you what you really want to see? Or are you going to re-involve yourself in that dynamic and just be imagining hella shit? Because I feel like half the time we just be imagining shit. And it's not to gaslight anybody, but it's rather to draw attention to the ways that we can create our own narratives about people. And we can like dress people in those narratives in our minds. And we can tell ourselves that those people are better for us than they actually are. And we can assign so much nobleness and value to a person who sends us a big email or a big text saying how much they regret losing you. Well, yeah, you regret losing me because I gave you a lot of attention. You regret losing me because I gave you a lot of supply when you didn't deserve it. Mm, You regret losing me because I gave you access you didn't deserve. And now you have tried with other women and you've seen that they're not giving you such access either. And now you regret ruining a job, an opportunity you had where things were much easier because the person that you were experiencing that ease with had low self-esteem during that time and that you happened to collide and now that your self-esteem has improved you have no use for this guy so you have no use for the closure and the true confirmation that you needed you've already given yourself that so sometimes people like that guy can just come back into your well no, no, no they don't come back but they can try and come back by sending you little tempting pieces of bait that will make your ego feel lifted but really they want to get something from you and when you can manage your own relationship with seeking control and you can develop self-control then you won't be won over by false attempts to develop closure